Hello folks, it's the Pest Jester again. Welcome to another one of my videos. This is another one of the model reviews that I started doing recently. And in this one I'm going to review a couple of trolleybus models. We're going to do two in this one, so good value for money. Uh, it's the same casting basically, but uh, one of them is by Corgi, original omnibus company. And the other one is by Atlas Editions in the Great British Buses series. And they are both Teesside trolleybuses. So we're going to start with the Corgi model. This is uh, catalogue number 41401 in the livery of the Teesside Railless Traction Board, um, or TRTB for short. TRTB would own one third by Middlesbrough Corporation and two thirds by Eston Urban District Council. They started operation in 1919. They carried on up to 1968 when they became part of Teesside Municipal Transport. Um, along with the Corporation Transport Departments of Middlesbrough and Stockton, but more of that anon. So the model itself was uh, released in two versions. Um, they're not differentiated on the end of the box, as you can see. It just says 41401. Um, Semi-officially known as 41401-1. Uh, that had a destination North Ormsby. And 41401-2 uh, had a destination South Bank, so this is a slash 2 version. Uh, altogether 3,020 were produced, 1,510 um, of each destination. In all cases, they uh, modelled vehicle number 2, uh, GAJ12. The real vehicle was a Sunbeam F4. It was new in 1950 with an East Lancashire body. Between 1962 and 1965, the whole batch were rebodied by Row of Leeds. And this shows the uh, bus in its rebodied state. It's the Corgi Row Trolleybus. If you want to know any more about uh, the history of Row, um, who were from Crossgates in Leeds, refer you to the website leedsengine.info. Um, as the name suggests, it's mainly about railway engines, but there is a feature on there about road vehicles that were built in Leeds, uh, including quite a long feature on the Row works, the full history of it. So yeah, check that out, leedsengine.info. So yeah, let's crack on and unbox it. So, as you can see, it's a second-hand model that I've bought. As anyone who's watched my reviews before will know, my uh, modelling is quite parsimonious. So the box is a bit worn, it comes from the uh, period when Corgi were doing these rather nice looking boxes. Unfortunately they are quite flimsy, the cardboard bit's quite uh, thin and they tend to get cut as well by the plastic box that's inside. But we'll uh, undo the end flap and then we'll uh, take the model out of its box. So there we go, um, on the second hand market at the minute you can normally get these for about 18 to £30. Pounds. There are some people selling them for more than that. Uh, this one was £11 pounds because it's got some minor damage and it's also... Um, certificated as you can see in other words the limited edition certificate all these models would have had when they were new has been either lost or removed uh, that does put the value down quite a bit collectors want the ones with certificates so if you do get one without it they are normally uh, quite a lot cheaper as I'm going to display this one either in my display case or um, on a little diorama it doesn't really matter that it hasn't got a certificate um, it's also got some minor damage which again has affected the value of it it's got the near side wiper missing and it, isn't, it wasn't screwed to the box, the uh, screws are missing from there. Again, it doesn't matter to me because I'm going to display it. But at uh, all that, consider that this one was £11, so uh, it's quite a big serving. Uh, just because it hasn't got a certificate and it's got a little bit of minor damage. And to be fair, looking at it from a distance, you can't really tell that the wiper is missing. So the Corgi model was a very good representation of the uh, rear body. It does capture the look of the prototype really, really well. Um, to show you how much trouble they've gone to, the uh, trolley bus is different to the motor bus as it should be. You can see there the uh, pillar here is quite thick. If we just contrast it with one of the motor bus models, this is the uh, Grimsby version of the motor bus. You can see it's got a normal width pillar um, there, so it is a different body shell um, for the motor bus compared to the trolley bus as it should be. Uh, the reason for that on the real trolley bus was it, uh, the body was reinforced to cope with the weight of the trolley booms. In other words, the poles that picked up the uh, overhead, the power from the overhead wire, and also the base for them. It put a lot of stress on the body. So the body was reinforced um, around the front, and that's why the thicker pillar was there. But yeah, nicely modelled and well done to Corgi. A lot of manufacturers would have uh, just used the same body shell for both. So yeah, looking at the frontal aspect of it, um, not much to really say. I believe the real ones did have a fog light um, at one point, but most of the photographs show it missing just a hole there. So Corgi have modelled it with a fog light kind of blanked out. 
Again, the side uh, aspects of it, livery nicely done. See the uh, T side real distraction board logo there. Looking at the back there, again, nicely modelled, lights uh, decently represented. I'll just try and show you this rather unusual thing below the back window. Uh, there's no lettering on this one, there would have been on the rail one. Um, basically, the terminus, the, the line, the trolleybus line of the TRTB ran from North Ormsby through uh, Cargo Fleet to South Bank, and then it split and went up to uh, Grangetown, or alternatively to Normanby. Um, later on, the termini were linked together to form a loop, but uh, before that, there was a turning manoeuvre at Normanby, and there was also a turning manoeuvre almost up to the end of the system at North Ormsby uh, that involved the bus turning round in a road junction. So when they were doing that, this uh, sign lit up on the back, and the lettering would become um, apparent turning circle. And it was to warn drivers of following vehicles that the bus was going to turn right round. It wasn't just turning like right at the junction. It was going to come right round and back again. Um, how effective it was, I don't know. It was unique as far as I know to the Teesside trolley buses. Um, so presumably, if you were local, um, you knew what it was going to do anyway. But uh, it wouldn't, you know, you'd understand what it meant. Um, if you weren't local, you probably wouldn't understand what it meant. And you had to rely then on drivers' common sense to... Um, hang back and go I don't know what that means so I'll hang back and see what happens and then the offside again not much to report nicely detailed the uh, interior as you can see is modelled in a subdued uh, black colour by the look of it I think the real ones had uh, sort of brown seats dark brown seats and uh, brown seat backs but the dark um, casting or moulding should I say of the interior Looks about right, you know, it wasn't, they weren't in your face interiors. Detailing of the uh, trolley booms is uh, nicely modelled, as you can see in the walkways on the roof that maintenance staff would have used. Uh, they do unhook, they're not sprung, so they don't go upwards. I think you can bend them if you want to, to point up if you've got overhead wires. I'm not going to do it just yet. You just hook them back under the uh, retainer there. There we go. But yeah, very nicely modelled. This model does come with uh, mirrors as well. You can just about see them in the box. Uh, the separate fittings, you can just see them on the top there. So I might fit those at some point. So this model was released in May 2006. So now we're going to move on to the Atlas Editions model. Um, Atlas Editions use mainly Corgi castings. Um, so they use the same casting as the previous bus that we looked at. Uh, this is catalogue number 4655115, uh, released first in May of 2011. Um, unlimited production, there wasn't a limited amount of these. I think they still produce them now, actually, or they were doing until quite recently anyway. They're kind of a budget range, um, but it's the same casting, so it's still a good model. As you can see, the packaging's less involved. If I just open the end flap there, you can see it's just um, on its base with uh, a plastic tray to uh, stop the booms from being damaged and to hold the bus into the box and then we just check it out these are designed to be uh, displayed permanently on the base as a result of which um, as you can see there's a plastic panel glued over the end of the screws um, to take it off the base which I will be doing at some point you need to break that off so basically if you put a screwdriver in you can see the uh, gap between the base um, and the plastic cover flap but if you put a screwdriver in there and hit it with a hammer it will break off obviously um, the brake is permanent, so if you plan to sell the thing, I probably wouldn't bother. But uh, yeah, that's the way to get that off, and it exposes the screws, and you can unscrew it from the base in the same way you would with the OOC model. So, as we said, TRTB, the T SAD Rail Distraction Board, ceased to exist in 1968. On the 31st of March, that was the last day. On the 1st of April, they were subsumed into the T SAD Municipal Transport. As we said earlier, along with the Corporation Transport Departments of Middlesbrough and Stockton. Uh, Stockton also operated on behalf of Thornaby on Tees Council as well. The uh, liveries of TRTB and Stockton were green. The livery of Middlesbrough was a rather nice mid-blue colour. Uh, and there was a rumour that the turquoise that Tees had municipal transport settled on was actually the uh, old paint shades mixed together. It might be an old wives' tale. They may well have painted a couple of vehicles at the start um, like that just to uh, get them in a new livery. But uh, before long, they would have had to um, order some new paint, some new turquoise paint, 
So it's probably an old wives tale as I say, but that's uh, the rumour about where the unusual colour came from. As you can see it is the same casting as the uh, OOC one. They are slightly more cheaper um, produced because they're designed to be sold at a cheaper price. So there's no opening windows represented on the upper deck for example. But it's still a very very nice model. Is the shade of turquoise correct? Um, it's hard to say really. I've only ever seen one vehicle in real life in this livery and that's a preserved Daimler Fleetland that's on the circuit. Very nicely preserved. But that does carry a later version of the livery with more cream. The cream extending around the uh, lower deck windows uh, and not the version that the trolleybus is carried. The uh, extended area of cream does affect the colour contrast and it makes the turquoise look a different shade. But it's hard to say. I've studied many, many photos of Teesside Municipal Transport vehicles. As I said, they came into being in 1968. They uh, ceased to exist in 1974. They were renamed as Cleveland Transit, who relaunched with a different livery. Now, bearing in mind the, uh, the years they were active, 68 to 74, the camera technology and the film technology of the time um, wasn't as it is in more recent times and plus the ageing of the films that the photos were taken on. So I've studied photos, and basically it's one of those colours that looks different in every single photo you see of it. Um, it depends on weather conditions, it depends on if the vehicle had been freshly painted or not, time of day, that kind of thing. So it's hard to say, possibly it's a little bit um, too green. I think most of the photos I've seen do show a more bluish tinge to it, but it's certainly a good attempt at it. And for the kind of price these sell for, they're more than a lot of the Atlas Editions vehicles, but you can get them for about a tenner. Uh, this one was £10. They're actually some cheaper than that on um, a certain internet auction site. But the clincher was the post. I bought it from the same place I bought the other one. Uh, and the postage for two was uh, quite cheap, so um, that made a difference. But yeah, £10 or just under is about the starting point. There are people selling them for more than that. You can still pick up the odd new one as well for a little bit more. The turquoise wheels are prototypical, um, TMT unfortunately did paint the wheels turquoise. The uh, fleet name is modelled in black on the cream band. Some of the vehicles um, that were earlier repaints had it in gold on the turquoise just under the low deck windows there. But most of them carried it there so that's perfectly prototypical. As you notice the T on the uh, fleet number is in white whereas the rest of the fleet number is in gold. That is prototypical as well. Um, t Municipal Transport renumbered a lot of the vehicles when they took over the various fleets so that they were in one series. They did the trolley buses in a three digit series and then decided it might be nice to differentiate that they were trolley buses by giving them a prefix, um, a letter T. Um, but they didn't appear to have ordered any gold T's so um, all the photos seem to show the vehicles running with a white T and a gold fleet number so that's prototypical. There is a slight issue with this that most reviewers don't uh, pick up. Um, it's modelled as T294 registration number CPY288. However, T294 was actually CPY287 uh, and CPY288 was T295. So the fleet number and the registration number don't match. I used to have one of these uh, years ago and I did change the uh, registration number to match the fleet number on it. And I also changed the destination plan while I was at it. Uh, as far as I know, the entire production of um, the Atlas model has got North Ormsby as its destination. But yeah, very nice model. As I say, it's the Corgi model just uh, re-released by Atlas. So the detailing is pretty much the same. You've got the turning circle sign on the back there as well. But yeah, very, very nice. Um, the only other thing about it that strikes a slightly jarring note is the turquoise interior. Um, as I said before, the uh, interiors of them were brown, um, so the dark colour interior of the Corgi model is more um, accurate than this. Um, I think the one I had before, because I was changing the registration number, I also took it apart and painted the interior. But whether I will or not on this one, I don't know. But still a very nice model. Um, as far as I know, the only model that's ever been done in Teesside Municipal Transport livery, it's not a very well-known fleet. Or well represented so uh, well done to Atlas for uh, doing that. CPY 287 and 288 were original numbers 16 and 17 in the uh, TRTB fleet again they were new with East Lancashire bodies in fact sorry no, no they weren't they were new with row bodies but uh, to a utility design the kind of build in, built in the war 
and again they were rebodied in the uh, early 60s with the type of rear body that's modelled here. So yeah, two very nice models um, of a very, uh, very little known fleets really. They look good in my collection. So uh, thank you for joining me as always. Please take care of yourselves and I will see you again soon. Bye for now.